I'm Arthur Dunham. Hello there. And I'm the third generation of the Dunham family. Grandfather Dunham came to the pen, onto the farm, in about 1880. This film was taken in the 19, between 1950 and 1960s. We put potatoes into the, into the old house to make them chit for the spring. We're now ready for a potato planting in March. Who's the month that, of March, anyway. Who's that working with you on the... Who, uh, who's that on the picture? That's Terry, the, one of the boys. He stuttered like mad, poor old boy. And that's, uh, you can see, that's myself or my brother-in-law coming and bringing them put them out. It was three, three trays of potatoes to 100 weight of potatoes. That's brother-in-law Ernie. So where did you used to store the potatoes? In the old house in the winter time. We're now taking them into the field ready for planting. So where is that? Down by the old willow tree? Yeah, what the old willow tree, yeah. Which grandfather, your grandfather, planted when he was a boy, which is now defunct. So where did that old trailer come from? That came from Cardington. It was an ex-RAF um, trailer, and it was made up into a tr proper trailer by my grandfather or your great grandfather. And who's this and what's he what's he wheeling out now? Father, that's my father in there somewhere. He's uh, getting the potato planter out, which is a modern invention in those days. Instead of picking, uh, walking behind and planting potatoes in baskets, you sat on a machine and put them into cups that were going round and they dropped into the ground about a foot apart or whatever. So it was a lot easier than the old job. Oh yeah, a lot easier than the old job. That's granddad there, your granddad. He's can't he can't wait. Health and safety. He didn't know anything about health and safety. He just looked like he wants to hang around for anything either. No. So yeah, who's we're... who's on the back now? That's, where are we? That's Ernie, my brother in law and the two sisters are on there. You'll see them in, in a moment. That looks a fairly familiar view. Is that the view back to That's not farm the... on the corner? Yeah, on the corner, yeah. As you can see we're all fully air conditioned. It's tractors. But sitting looking to the girls on the back there, it looks like it was a cold all day. You look all well wrapped up anyway. We have to be. How many how many acres now would you do with something like that? We once we tried and we've managed to do one acre an hour, which was plumbing hard work because you'd got to load all the boxes onto the onto the planter, as you can see them doing it now. Put fertilizer in, you can see that can that uh, hopper in the front where you just put a uh, box. And we just managed one acre now. Nowadays, my nephew comes in, he loads a ton up on a machine with a teleporter, four rows at a time, and I don't know how many acres they do, but they travel a lot faster than we do. What was that when she got up? She lifted something up that on was the side? A, that was a marker, so it knows where I've got to go back next time with a the tractor. They look very comfortable cushions on those seats. <laughs> where were they? Corn sack. What's that in the background, those three, are they straw stacks or something? That's corn stacks. This is, must have been 1960 we did this. Because if you noticed beforehand, there was a building going up, which was a new dryer. Just the one on the right-hand side, I can just see the frame of it. Uh, yep, yeah, that's it. I can see it. That's when we bought the combine in 1960, which we'll see later on. And not in a car flying down the road there. Yeah. When did the when did you move into the new house? About 1939. Grandfather died in 1937, so there was a little bit of money to dad. Grandfather Dunham's policy, my grandfather, his policy was you'll get it when I'm dead, so he didn't pay any wages much. So your grandfather worked for him until just before the war when he died. No, my father was farming, but he was only tenant to grandfather. And then when Grandfather died in 1937, Dad and all the rest of the Dunham family got a farm. So were there several farms around here then? Yep. There's Dun Dunham's down Horsemore, Dunham's at Old Spen, yep. and there was a, another relation at Peterborough. And they, their farm they were on in the 30s 
grandfather Dunham had that, my grandfather had that, for nothing because of the depression it was so bad nobody wanted to farm. So what he just he just farmed it to just keep farm it tidy just to keep it tidy. And just recently uh, the that farm has been sold for building. So my cousins now are, are might be millionaires, I don't know. There's the straw stack for that background. Corn again. stacks. Oh, corn stacks, sorry. <laughs> so when did you move into Little Rag? Uh, in 1963, when we got married. So this was that house at the top there was the old Little Rag, and that would have been Ellis around there. That was it, yeah. But there'll be a photograph of that as we go through the film. So what's this then? This is potato harvesting? Yeah, we're now potato picking, or harvesting. We all say potato picking. In common, say potato harvesting, but to offend people, just say potato picking. And my sister Ivy is driving the tractor. She was the elder one of the family, and she loved driving tractors. And on there, that's my mother. She never wore a, a pair of overalls. She always wore a skirt. Always wore a skirt. Yep. And this was very mechanised in the whatever date it was, or whatever time it was. They were built in March at Johnson's Engineering down Elliott Road, which is now turning into a housing estate and um, Davon's workwear. Yeah. So was that six or seven of you on there? Aren't they? Oh yeah. Because we were picking the clots out, and uh, the thing was, you see, in those days there was no machinery to make the seed bed, or not make a good seed bed. Nowadays we've got power harrows and. So it smashes all the clots up and it all comes up like dust. These, what we're doing here is bagging them straight off the field. As you can see, uh, uh, press a little closer. There's a man standing on the end and he's got bags under the hoppers. You can see them? Yeah, I can see them. And they were hundred weight bags in those days, not four stone. Yeah. And uh, they were weighed up. Well, when we'd finished picking it to look for the better half two, we used to go around and weigh them all up. And then the lorry would come about four or five in the afternoon and clear them up. So this would have been early or main crop? It could be both. You could either do both. And you always bagged it off? No, we didn't always bag them off because we like to put some in the winter in the heat for winter time, which you'll see a bit later on. So would you have grown these in the same sort of rows as you do nowadays? No, in those days we did 28 inches. Nowadays they would uh, be 36 inches and we used to get a lot of green potatoes. I was talking to my cousin, my nephews the other day, and they were saying they'd whittled 75 ton, two of them, in one afternoon. Good, good. That was all on a bulker. Now, we're putting those into, into carts now, as you can see. Now, I invented that bit on the top there. So the clots all came down the, well, it's gone again. But the clots came out underneath, and the good potatoes went straight in the cart. Oh, so to give you a cleaner load, so you take oh, yeah, off cleaner the load, yeah. Well, we didn't want to take the earth off because it all made it hard work when we were riddling. So were they specialist tractors, trailers you bought to go with tractors or were they old cart horses? That was a cart, a horse cart, <laughs> converted into a tractor cart because we were moving so slowly, horses couldn't walk that slowly. Yeah. I see that, um, we're st I think we're still bagging them there, aren't we, here? Yeah. Yeah, they're still going in there. There's a lot of earth coming up, isn't there? There is a heck of a lot of earth, mate. Nowadays, we've got rotaras and rotavators. You can see we've got more clots than potatoes. And nowadays, like say, the, uh, when they're potato harvesting, it's only one man on there, and they have a clean load nearly. And you've got what? Looks like we've got about six, six or seven of us here. So who the, there's, there's Grandmum on there? Yeah, Grandmum, she's in the... You can see the back to us. Yeah. Um, Terry, he's the lad. Um, With his blue top on. Yeah. Yeah. There's me um, and two other le uh, people, I think. Who would have helped you then those days? Oh, uh, anybody in town, because now then uh, those days you could get plenty of labour.
we're now putting potatoes into a heap or a clamp so that we can store them over the winter time. As you can see, that's granddad, your granddad. We weren't mechanised in those days, you see, we've still got old horse carts converted into tractor trailers. Potatoes are a lot cleaner now than they were coming off from the machine, aren't they? Oh, yeah. So, how much would you have got on one of those carts? About a ton. And the new trailers are what, about 15 or 16? New, nowadays, 15, 16 ton, yeah. He's manhandling them all off. All off, yeah, making a heap of them. You make a heap about nine, nine foot, yeah, about nine foot wide, but about five foot high. Then they all had to be covered with straw, and then afterwards, if we'd finished potatoes picking, we would go along and put all the earth on them, perhaps nine or ten inches of earth, so they would be protected all through the winter for frost from frost. Yeah, steady, Dad. You're right close to that car. It, get the backboard in. Nowadays it's all hydraulics, whereas this was manpower. He's then he's got a few on there, he wants to round up and make his heat better. You can see the bundles of straw on the side there, which is going on the side. Yeah. Of covering them over. So was he a fit and well young man? Well he lived in ninety two. That's not bad going. <laughs> now this is later on in the year. We're now riddling potatoes or grading them out. You would have a, a riddle in the middle there somewhere in the machine that would be say an inch a quarter, or inch and a quarter size or two inches or whatever the merchant wanted. So the small ones would drop through and all the, the size you wanted would stay on the riddle. Okay, so who's that working on there then? That's Auntie Edie and her daughter Kathleen. And one day we had, an, uh, during the war time, we had a deserter, a Canadian deserter come to work. We didn't know he was a deserter. And he filled three ton an hour. That was fast going. Normally we'd, we'd riddle about 10 or 12 ton a day. That's all we riddled. That would have kept you busy. Yeah. So that fork, what stopped it skewering the potatoes? It's got knobs on the end. What are you doing there then? Well, we're, there's two bags at the bottom there. Yep. The, and you just saw the flap go over. And that's his putting, uh, say, a hundredweight of potatoes into each, uh, each bag. But I think these are paper sacks now. So you, you put a hundred weight into uh, Hessian, Hessian sacks, sacks. And paper four, sacks would be four stone into paper sacks. That's the same size as now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It looks a much warmer day if nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, we're stacking them up, and we used to put a hundred in a in a pile, so we knew that when the lorry come, there was no argument how many he'd got on because once upon a time, you'd get the lorry driver say, I want another bag. And you think, so, I know I made a hundred. Now we've gone into mango work, and we never did this job. The grandfather never let us do this job until we had a good sharp frost on it. And if you can imagine those mango tops were full of frost, frost, and we were told never to speak until we got the other end of the field in case we chopped a finger off and didn't realise it. Because none of you've got gloves on, have you? No, no gloves. And you just pulling them out, or just, they already just pulling them out of the ground. They were about 15 or 16, inch, 15 or 16 inches long, and about, oh, I suppose, 15 inches circumference, and uh, we just pulled them. What they, do you do with them? They we use those for cattle food in the winter time. We'd have to clean them all the bottom off and take the tops off, and then we'd put them through a mango pulper, which we haven't got a photograph of. But this was blooming hard work, and it was a system of pull, chop, throw. Pull, chop, throw, pull, pull chop. <laughs> and all day long. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, we'd do that until dinner time, then after dinner time, we'd cut them up. Mm. So you put them into rows? Put them in rows, yeah. And then somebody come along and pick them up. In we, car. we we came along and picked them up, put them in a horse car or tractor car. See, we still haven't got proper trailers, just still old fashioned uh, horse carts. Is that a boy there working with you? Yeah, boy. Yeah. Who was that? Do you know what? I've forgotten his name now. He didn't stay very long. Don't blame him, really. Probably chopped his fingers off. <laughs> I'm talking about chopping his fingers off. So I think what, what are you doing now? We're loading them onto, onto the carts. 
by hand we two times four yeah you couldn't lift more than two sometimes you couldn't lift two Wouldn't the, wouldn't the bullocks eat the, the tops as well? No, because they'd, they'd rot off in the winter time, you see. Oh, I see, so you stored these. Stored these in until March, April yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, that used to be your auntie Eileen's job and my job on a Saturday morning when we were younger, cleaning the mangles and dad had come to bed dinner time and said, you're just, you're just bad enough for the weekend now, that'll do. So we'd pack up. This is my sister Ivy again, the tractor driver. What's that on the way for some kind of side of the wheels? Yep, they're what they call strakes. And they were so for assisting you when you were ploughing. Because rubber tyres in those days weren't very good for ploughing. And designed them properly. Well, that give you more grip. It give you more grip. Like like those those um, things, you undone a couple of bolts and drove forward and they flew out. Yep. So there was about six inches of outside your tyre. Yeah. Dad is rounding the mangles up because otherwise, you, you, you know, you're going to run over a lot when the next cart load come up. And he wanted this heap to be about six foot high. Because he wasn't that big, was he? No, he was about five, ten, I suppose. Now he, he's putting a reed which we cut out the dikes in the winter time or autumn time and uh, just putting a bit of earth on so the wind doesn't blow the reed off but they will all be covered by earth in the winter time we're now getting land ready for, for drilling and uh, the tool on the back of the track you'll see perhaps later on that's it I made that and it's sprung loaded and uh, it worked very well so that's down by the front of the old house isn't it? Front of Annie Miro's house, I think. No, 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 no that's Dennis is at that's back, Dennis is the back, yeah. We've now gone into What's drilling. This? Drilling, that's, that's a, an old drill pa uh, patronised by Queen Victoria. Got the plate on it, you know, by, by, by royal appointment to Queen Victoria. Still got it in the shed. So Edie, she's the girl on the back. She makes sure that the coulters are not rocked so or we don't lose any... Uh, Rose in the field. You can see the old home truck there, yep. the old Volkswagen. We used to use that as a spare transport. Now, when they come drilling, they have a uh, cultivator on the front of the tractor, cultivator underneath, and a drill on the top or, or the back of that, and a ton of corn in it. Where we was only, you can see, we were only putting about two or three stone on at a time because we couldn't manage any more. Or the machine couldn't carry any more anyway. Earlier on, that would have been done by horses, three horses. So did, did you have many horses on the farm originally? Oh yeah, but they all went in, uh, you know, late fifties. Oh, you had you had horses as late as that. Yeah. Well, it was only kept as pet. One was kept kept as a pet. Yeah. So, but well, she died in the field, so <laughs> that was the end of horses. Nowadays, like you say. They travel much faster than we did. They probably do wider roads as well. Oh, doing more. Roads, yeah. Well, they're doing four jobs in one, you see, where we was only doing one at a time. You've got two tracks in the field there together. Yeah. It's, it's the same. That's getting the land ready. I think later on in this film, you'll see, I think you'll see three tractors in the field. Ah, these, these are some of the animals we used to feed with the mangles. We used to have about 13 bullocks all through the winter. This was when Dad was farming. Yeah. Used to... And you got the old dog there as well. Yeah, that's that's uh, Jack, I think it was. Three nieces there, that's Kathleen, that's Miss Edith's daughter, uh, that's June, she, she came from Maine, she'd been very ill, and who else, we've got Mary and Joyce there, 
What are they doing? Well, we had a load of brick rubble come, and it got a lot of wood in it. And you can see, they have more fun than anything else, I think. If they'd left me alone with a tractor and coal of air, I could have pulled it all down, but you know what kids were like. So where did that rubble come from? Some old house we knocked down in the town. We used to do those sort of things. Somebody got an old house went knocking down. So what are those wooden things behind you? They're pigsties, they are. Oh, they're the old pigsties? They're the right? old pigsties, yeah. Anything I could... They were made out of prefab floors. Well, that's my mother. So what are you doing with those bricks? Well, we're making foundations for pigsty. So you're breaking them down? So breaking them down, yeah. The concrete to go on. Because um, I learned a little bit about, little bit about bricklaying because in the winter time, when I'd finished ploughing, I'd go to Wisbridge College and uh, do a course on bricklaying, um, welding, you name it, I did it. But uh, we'd never built a, a place. That looks like a new tractor. Well, it's fairly new anyway. This must be in the late 50s, I think. Still air conditioned. Look. But well, we're breaking these bricks up. I don't know whether we need to done that, you know. If we'd have run a bit of wet concrete in, that'd be nearly as good. So the pigs all effectively just running around the yard free beforehand? Most of them were, or in those other sheds. Because we've got sheds all over the place. But, uh, Oh, we're poultry now. But, uh, oh no, the lorry now is bringing some cement to, you know, make the foundations. But we had a pigsty built earlier on by a professional builder. This fell down and now it's still standing. So that's the concrete coming then, isn't that's it? That's the concrete, it's yeah. On the top. Pouring on the top, yeah. And this building was about 40 foot long by about 26 foot wide. Wasn't too bad for amateur builders, was it? No, it's not bad at all. Now we're just still pouring concrete. So, who, so in those days it would have been you, Grandad? Grandma. Grandma, Terry working on the farm. Yep. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been needy. I've been evil full time, yeah. Then when I finished farming, I was working on the farm part time because I was out testing farmers for uh, chemical spraying or any anything to do with farming. So it went from about six or seven people full time plus a lot more at peak time yeah. to, to just one part time? That's it, part time. So these are all your bricks turning up? Yeah, these are bricks coming up. Super all unloaded and loaded by and stacked by hand. All unloaded by hand, yeah. These are all uh, for the floor again. You know, under the floor. No gloves. <laughs> oh, well, we're getting on with bricklaying now. What's your mother doing there? She's washing them. She's, yeah, she insisted that every brick had got to be dampened before we, we laid it. I don't know whether they bother about that now. I don't, I don't know. I think they just... Stick them straight. She looks a tough old woman. Oh. I wouldn't have dared say that if she was still alive. Oh, she was a lovely old lady. Yeah. She was strict, but she was a school teacher before she married my father. I don't know what she thought when she came down the pen with no water, no electric, no gas, and no no good roadway to get out. It's all just mud earth and you know, mud roadway in the winter time. So would you have a family you had the home truck, would you have a did they have a family car as well? I didn't get the home truck. Uh, yeah, I had the home truck on my own. So and that then, was about, about 1960? Oh, uh, no, I had it before then. And, because uh, that was, that was your mother and I's courting car. Oh, was it? Yeah. And he got on the back on it, Binnie Moore heard of pedigree large white pigs. Now, if you notice, Dad, he's working headwind. How do you tell that? I'll tell you, you'll see in a minute. Oh, getting a face full there. Yeah. But it didn't kill him, I don't think. He's, like I say, he lived until 92. And was he healthy all the way through? Oh, yeah, until the last six months. Yeah. Yep. Then he's making more, sand, more cement up. Or is this, this is your mortar for your brick lane, That's isn't for, it? Yeah, for the brick lane, yeah. And when he was 40, he would have heart attacks. And uh, the doctor said, you, got, you can't do any more work. He said, well, I've got a family of six children. 
He said, there's nothing else, I've only got this farm. And he didn't die about attack anyway. So, given that was the first bit of bricklaying you'd properly done, and you taught at college, how accurate was it when you finished? Finished up with a quarter of an inch here. On 40 odd feet length? 40 a foot long, yeah, and 26 foot wide. That's a sophisticated dressed lady there, who's that? That's Aunt Arlene, and that's Raymond, your cousin. He looks like he's working hard there. Well, masons always do work hard, mate. So who would have been taking this film? Uh, they are, I think that would have been Auntie, um, it's hard to be, well, it wouldn't be Grandmum, because she's on it, isn't she, in places. It'd be Auntie Muriel, I think. So was she working in town in those days? Yeah, days? she was an optician. Oh, right, you've got Raymond working hard there. I don't know what they're doing, I think they're just <laughs> fooling a bit, I think. Back to the brick lane again. Back to brick lane, yeah. So when would you have done this? Done Is it all this a full time project or? Well we fitted in farm works through the year, you see. So when you'd have been quieter on the farm you'd have did this instead? When we've got the sugar beet uh, drilled and hoed and uh, we've been doing this. Because yeah, that's about all we No, you fitted your jobs around it. Well it took you just you did it in one summer? One summer, yeah. I realise now, brick plan, I ought to laid about a whole lot of cement down on the top of the bricks instead of one at a time. But uh, you live and learn. Next time I do a project, I think I shall learn it better. I built all the corners and mum, in her spare time, used to do the walls, so uh, we worked together. So you didn't lay all the bricks yourself? No, I didn't lay all the bricks myself. No. All these years you took credit for it, <laughs> finally come out, and all you did was the easy corner bits. So that's the, that's the old house old again. House, the old, old house, house again, isn't it? Yeah, that's the old pub again, yeah. So that's all that view over Grandad's head is now obscured by that's Dunham's Wood, isn't that's it? That's it, yeah. Yeah. And then in the background now, there's the uh, yeah. windmills. Yeah. So what are you doing there? Well, we're putting one of the lintels on. We made our own lintels. We didn't buy anything. We made all our own lintels. Reinforced them with steel. I don't know whether they're necessary, but they're still holding up. Watch it, Dad. Get your head down. That's it. Ah, this is interesting. I'm not going to tell you what it's about though, not for a minute. You'll probably see that later on. So who's that? Is that you again? Yeah. Oh, there's Andy Ivy, the tractor driver, and me. We're having a talk now, as you can see. Looks like you're having a bit more than a talk there, Father. Yeah, but that was liquid for her refreshment. That lorry driver brought them down. Oh, I see. That's your... That's the, be that's the beer wagon. I see. So, uh, so the, the uh, brick lane got a bit wobbly after that, did it? Uh, I, I don't know, mate. Quite honestly. I shouldn't think so. We're not like you people nowadays. We don't drink us quite as much. If you notice, you'll see how many bottles are on the, sea, on the top there. So back to work. So in those days, I remember as a boy, there were telegraph poles down, and telegraph cables down the road, with lots of starlings on them. Would that, would that have been put up afterwards? What? What the telephone poles? Telephone poles. No, the telephone poles all came down, mate. They're all underground now. But when did they go up? When uh, we had the first, no, we had the second telephone down the fen here. Uh, the first one was a farmer down the fen. But his man couldn't phone out. He could only phone the mat. The, the boss, could only phone boss, out. boss could only phone in, but the man couldn't phone out. And then we had uh, we had ours put on in 1939, and we were uh, official fire watchers for the pen for the wartime. You know, when the incendiary bombs, because 
in the wartime we we couldn't put stacks together. I'll tell you about that later. So this is the roof going on. That's the, the roof going on. going on. And when you think there was only Dad and I doing all those timbers, and some of those timbers are four inches by four inches and twenty some odd foot long. Health and Safety at Work Act. Thank goodness they weren't about. You have to be careful because you might fall off one of them nowadays. <laughs> might have fell off one of those in those days, yeah. but I never did. You knew where you were putting your feet. Was it nailed together or screwed? Nailed. All nailed. Six inch nails. When your grandfather was a builder, great grandfather was a builder, real looking car with George Green. They used six inch nails, mate. You said you want a six inch nail, a four inch nail is not long enough. He built the carts, by the way, the old carts we used. saw in the corners of asbestos because when you put four sheets of asbestos together that's much thicker than zinc so you have to cut two corners off so they lay uh, properly on the roof looks like the dust didn't harm him too much no it? no you have a tough old humbug no, it must be cold there if you saw him through that he looks like he's putting that he's <laughs> working hard at it he could do with a sharper saw father yes but asbestos blunts sores very quickly <laughs> But you just did you hammer straight through the asbestos? No, we drilled holes through them. You'd certainly want a calm day to be doing that. Holding yeah. that up there with a bit of a breeze bro and a bit of hair. Well, we didn't do it when it was gale force, but we did it most of the time anyway when the weather was even with a bit of wind on. Asbestos is not like zinc. It doesn't blow quite as easy. It doesn't cut you either. Mechanisation there, look what we drilled a hole so we didn't crack the asbestos. So would you have electric down the farm in those days? Only a generator. Because this house wasn't built, you see, so there was no uh, no, uh, no need for it. So when would you have got mains electric down the farm? We got uh, mains electric when you was four or five, I think. Something like that, probably. About 1970? Something like that, yeah. Perhaps a bit later than that. We'd got a generator down the farm. We had that when uh, the Queen was crowned, I suppose when she was crowned Queen. We watched that on television down the farm. But that was generator. It used to start up when you when you switch the first light on, the generator used to start up. When you switch the last one up, it switched off. So it looks like the roof's getting nearly finished. Yeah. Did you actually put your foot through any of that asbestos? No, no. We knew where our feet were going. God dear. And what's that you putting up there? That would be the roof light. Oh, per perspect. Perspect, perspect, the perspect roof light, yeah. Yeah. Just give us a bit more light through. I must say, I was glad when we were finished. This is the outside dunging passage. See, it's different shape, you know. but that's where the pigs used to go out and muck. Because pigs are very clean animals if you let them. They won't mess in their own place. They go find somewhere to mess. So then, you could, could you drive a tractor through that yep. and then just scrape you it all out? Just have a tractor and scrape it out. Yeah. They just spin a little hold on Alice Chalmers. We're nearly finished now. Oh, I've used those. Oh, sorry, go on. You can see Ivy there, she's painting the doors, so you can see how wide the doors were. So, would you have used that? Did you use that for pigs from roughly when until when? What, the tractor? No, the pig, pig style. Sorry. Oh, we use it until we finished pigs, uh, selling pigs. Yeah, and they like say you must have been four or five because we used to weigh pigs up on a Sunday morning, put you in a, a, wire, a corn frame. Do you remember the old corn, metal corn yeah. frames? put you in there so you couldn't get out and cause any trouble. You used to cry like mad sometimes when you wanted to get out. 
and uh, we, Mum and I, we'd go and weigh all these pigs up. I think it was 200 pound we got away. I can't remember what age and kilo, but it didn't matter. And uh, all the pigs, we'd got a good breed of pig, his large weight, and uh, the bacon returns nearly always came back triple A, and triple A was the top grade of uh, any any bacon, any bacon factory. So would you keep them? You keep them from piglets through? Or did you yeah. breed them? Yeah, we bred them. Yeah, we got a pedigree herd, and. Uh, I, when I used to sell pedigree stuff, I would take these uh, records to the market or show or whatever we were going to, and I could sell more pigs with those bacon pigs without looking, you know, they didn't even look at the pig. They just wanted to see the records. So they knew they were getting some good breeding stuff. And that was what we've just seen is where they were before, and then this is the nick of them going into the new home. That's it, yeah. And we wanted, you, you did say how many did we want a year, but we like to get 24 pigs a year because eight or ten didn't pay for themselves. So 24 pigs would that be what, two litres? Two litres a year, yeah. I know people nowadays do three litres, but we we only stuck to two litres, so we weaned them at six, at eight weeks. And that's the back of the That's the truck. back of the home truck when I was caught in your mum. What's he saying about Binny Moore? Binny Moore heard of pedigree large white pigs. Well, that's just the, the paraffin man bringing the, or the petrol man, diesel man, bringing the diesel for the, for the harvest time. There we go, cutting corn in the old-fashioned way. If, if you watch that program, uh, Victorian Farm, Victorian Farm, you'll see we, they were doing exactly the same as that, but those, they've got horses. I'm driving the tractor, my father's on the binder, and the binder, he cuts the corn, ties it into bundles, and away it goes, then it throws it on the ground again. I was counting up the other day how many times we handled that corn each shelf until we got it thrashed. And that was about 15 times. Nowadays they come in with a combine, 26, 7 foot cut, satellite controlled, and it's all done and gone. If we could cut an acre an hour, we were doing alright. Now, if they don't do about, I don't know, they could have about a 30 foot cut. How many acres they do an hour because they're going as fast as we're going with that tractor or even faster and a man sits in a nice air-conditioned cab with a fridge in there if you want your pint of beer you can have a pint of beer cold beer or whatever so what size cut would you have on that that would used to be a, that was a five foot cut because that was that was originally pulled by horses and you couldn't go much bigger because it was hard work you see that was the first bit of machinery really had on the farm because it got this knotter and it was a very complicated piece of machinery that uh, cut the, tied the string up, a big needle came through and went back again and it tied a knot and threw it out and cut the string. And that's, uh, hopefully it worked all the time but sometimes it broke. Now the corn has been standing in shocks or stooks, whichever you like to call them about a fortnight or two three church bells because it was always called and now Ernie is on taking the shocks to pieces and I'm loading the idea you put the heads inside so the corn all stayed inside and then when we got up to up to the house up to the yard we'd make a stack and the stack used to be four yards by four yards wide by nine nine yards long and that was usually enough for one day's thrashing as you can see, there's three men there. That's my father stacking. I'm next to him, bind, what they call binding. Dad, Dad handled five shows for a start, and I handled all the rest of them into the middle of the stack. So would he make the outside of the stack? He was making the outside of the stack, yeah. One year when he, he, him and Edie was on the stack, binding, stacking, I was doing something else. Well, I was throwing them across to him and suddenly they weren't there, the stack, saw the stack had slipped out. So he made no more ado, got down, let's have a cup of tea. He then got some stack pegs which he used for thatching, or thatching pegs, whichever you like to call them. And uh, he stuck these stack pegs in and built the stack up again and that stayed up all, you know, all through the winter until we were ready to thrash it. This is 
Who's that on the top there? You got me a starting young. That's uh, June, June Hankins, one of my nieces. When we got an elevator, that made work a lot easier because otherwise you had to throw them above your head up on the stack and you stood right on the outside of the stack. That wasn't very safe, but it lasted. Nobody ever died, I don't know. We used to like one shelf at the top, one shelf in the middle, and one shelf at the bottom. But this lad, he's getting keen. He's soon going to get told off. Which in later film, I'll probably will see he has done. So they should to try and send them all up the same way? Yeah. Bottoms up. Because if it went the other way, it would rub the corn as it went up, rub the ears out. So you said that size of stack was about right for one day's threshing. threshing. Yeah. Would they do all the threshing in one? Just come and do all the threshing for the season? No, you only, you only used to have one. Usually, usually thresh about one stack because you either wanted the money or the straw. The straw was used for bedding for the cattle and the horses and the pigs. And uh, so you only had about one day. They were contractors come in, a company named Betts. As you can see, the stack's getting taller and taller. It's driven by a petrol engine. And the stack would be, uh, oh, somewhere about 20 some odd foot high, I suppose, perhaps longer higher than that, 22 or 3 foot high. Got the, still got the old thatching ladders, or the ladders we used to go up with. But I don't know if I... You can see how the tallest ladder on is now. Look, Dad is now, or I don't know whether it's Dad or me, finishing the stack up the roof off. And that is one shelf wide. And you can imagine walking along that, a, a shelf is about a foot, of, a foot across, walking along that, and it's all loose. You wanted some good, strong... Oh, that's the angle of it. <laughs> you want some strong... On it. You want some strong nerves, boy. Yeah. So you, when you finish up, you only had one bloke at the top, and, and then the shows were only coming up about one every elevator fall. Yeah. That's me, that's me going up again. Is that a straw or is that beans? That's beans, I think. We used to grow beans, peas, or anything else. And would you, would you sell beans and peas and wheat and barley all in the same sort of size stack, a, a bags and so on? Or no, no, no. And you want to notice as well, there's a a uh, sleeper, what we call a sleeper, they were put either side of the stack just while you were stacking so they didn't fall over. We left them on there about two days. No. So they're all the straw stacks together? They're all oh, corn, corn stacks! Stack. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. You said you weren't allowed to keep them together during the war? In the wartime we, we were only allowed to put two together in case Germans bombed us, you know, sentry bombs and that sort of thing. So they were scattered all over the farm. Blooming nuisance. This chap here now is going to thatch the stack. As you can see, he's going up there holding both hands, but he's not holding that straw on. It's just balance. So we're all the, all the corn stack thatched. Yep. Well, perhaps if you want to thatch, if you want to thresh one in October, you would probably want to thatch that one. But all the rest is thatch all through the winter. When I got old enough. I used to do all the thatching as well, and it was jolly hard work on your knees and your ankle and your insteps, because you're standing on a ladder step, which was only about inch to half round. The biggest, hardest job was doing the gore at the end, or the, the um, you'd got to put uh, gauze in. Dressmakers know more about gauze than you do. It's a bigger bit at the bottom, a little bit at the top. Yep. There would be about five, about five rows of pegs go around there and string. Yeah. That's a general view of the stacks or some of the stacks after they've all been thatched. So how many stacks would you have had around the farm? Perhaps about seven. You're just finishing off and tidying up there? Yeah. 
Now you never finished off on the end, you always finished halfway down. Because it was easier to do that because it was straight work. But he he was a con well I say contractor. Alright, now we're we know we're threshing. Health and Safety Work Act didn't mean a thing. Nobody ever got killed. These two men are taking the stack to pieces now, as you can see. That's Edie there. She's going to wind the sack wheel up. And Grandad had that sack wound and made specially for me because I couldn't manage a small one. The small one only went just at the bottom of the stack, sack. This one went another 18 inches high. And that's 18 stone in there. So what, 18 stone for wheat? 18 stone for wheat, 16 stone for barley, 12 stone for oats, 21 stone for beans and peas. We went to thresh for Uncle Tom once, and when I got those, his father said, you're corn carrying day, but I haven't got enough corn sacks. Can you fill them up? And there was uh, uh, railway sacks. Well, railway sacks are always bigger sacks than ordinary sacks. And when we weighed them up the next day, there were 23 stone in them. How yeah, we managed, I said no, but we did. So is this the straw now, rather that's than That's the corn? straw, yeah, that's the straw. Been bunched up again because we wanted it for potatoes, or whatever we wanted it for. I can't remember now what we did at that time. That's so because you had animals and a mix of farming, you, you used a lot more? You used all the straw up. You didn't ever waste any straw. That's a cousin of mine. Because we never had enough labour on our own for threshing, so you'd go around your neighbours and say, can you give us a day threshing? And you go threshing, we'll give you a day. So what's he doing on the top there? That man, he's cutting the strings and catching the strings and spreading the shoves out so they go through the threshing drum nice and easy. This, this is an early morning one because they're just taking the thatch off. That's first thing in the morning. So would the thatch be thrashed as well? No, no, you don't thrash the thatch. You take all the thatch off. You take pull all the pegs out. Or hopefully. Occasionally you'd leave one in and then it'd go through the drum and there'd be a hell of a clatter. And the thrashing, the engine driver would say, Baba! Or something similar. Did you have any, ever have any accidents with the uh, thrashing machine? No, we nearly had one once. The, we normally we were using steam engines. And then when they started bringing a tractor around, and it was a field marshal with a single cylinder engine. You started up in the morning with a like a 12 bore cartridge. You hit it with a hammer, and it started. Now that little lad you, you probably saw through there, he was chaff carrying, and that was the muckiest job you could get. Now you watch this lad. You look how he spreads it out. Look, all nice and even, and he's catching the string at the same time, which we wanted for time potatoes up. But going back to this tractor. It was a field marshal, and after dinner you started it up with a with a crank handle. The crank handle was nearly as thick as my arm, and uh, when they started up one day, day after dinner, it never came off the off the fly uh, flywheel, and it went whizzing up in the air. Everybody ducked under the drum out the way because this thing, <laughs> if it had come down, it'd kill you. But nobody got hurt. Thank goodness. We had many a clip round the ear hole with a big belt. But uh, you you couldn't put you couldn't uh, do it for health and safety because there's no way you could do it. That was about 20, 30 foot long. This belt was. So who's never done that? That's gone again. Well, that's that's uh, that's mon uh, that's the engine driver. He he would like a job someday, and you'd pay him you know extra for looking after the drum. Yeah, there's there's the lad. You look at the big size, the size of that corn sack to that lad. That corn sack, chaff sack. That would probably be oats because we never never kept oats because they used to get in the bullock's eyes. You know, and you you know if you get a hair in your eye, it's pretty painful. Well, you get a bullock and he's got it in there. You ought to get that out. Or he'd go blind, or he would go blind. So what would you do with the other chaff? You keep it. Chaff. You just use that for, for mixing with the mangles. Still got my old same jacket on. Look, that must have been a good jacket, wasn't it? Here we are now loading corn. The lorry's come, we're finished threshing. Is that a stick? That's a stick, yep. Heaving stick. It was only about an inch and a half around and about two foot six long. This is mechanisation now, look, we've got an elevator. This is 
That's it, look at him. Up he goes. That's Dad, I think he's bringing a, bringing a load of hay up. We used to collect hay as well. That's Edie pitching up there, and Laura, Kathleen. And I think they have more come down than what they, what they have go of. Nowadays it's all done with bailers, nothing's, and nothing done before. Nineteen sixty-five. the bank manager came down and said, uh, you want to spend some money? Because I've got a lot of pigs. He said, what do you want? I said, well, I'd like to buy a combine and a, and a dry. He said, go and buy one then. Just like that. And so we went to Germany to a place called Haasewinkel where co class combines were made. And here we're being loaded up into a Dakotas. They was uh, DC-3s and uh, bucket seats. And I think, I think they've got a cushion on, but I can't remember. Steel seat. Who did you go with? Who was that oh, that's Uncle Tom we were going with. And uh, here we are now in Haasewinkel. This is the class combine factory. And it was a, big, a real big factory. And what they'd done, they'd bought all the aircraft tyres they could buy for the, for the combines. Very sensible. And the combine was a big place. And the two Mr. Classes, they used to ride the, around the factory on bicycles. That's the, that that's the hotel we stayed in. There was about 80 of us went. This is all from the local NFU or? No, no, this is a private thing from a, a place called Eagles of Lincoln. And this is just Germany, uh, you know, buses and streets and one another. Nothing of great importance, but just to show where we went or what was about. We'd never seen trams like this. Never been to Germany. This would have been in the west, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was in the west, yeah. <clears throat> we landed at an RAF base at Guttersloe. We didn't know where the hell we were going, but obviously they'd got permission to land. But look at the old vehicles there. Ah, now, if we've got a combine, we've got to have somewhere to store the grain. So this is the, uh, the builders building the grain store in 1960. You saw this in the background of the Yeah, that was, that was one of the films, films we had on earlier. Again, look at the health and safety. So did they have a crane or anything helping them? No, the, all they had was two telegraph poles as an A-frame. And they pulled all these uh, big sections up. They're all steel. And the, the uh, centre span, which is 40. Uh, 30 foot wide that went up on those two A-frames or one A-frame I think they were, I've got an idea there was only the two blokes doing it how the hell they did it I don't know there you can see the A-frame being moved and how long would it take them to put that up? about a week I think we put the frame up, then they had to leave it, you know, to let the concrete dry. And then uh, they came and put the asbestos on. So it's really like a big Meccano kit. Oh yeah. It was all all, uh, all been, you know, prefabricated. Now yeah, they're getting on now nicely. I can't see single harness or hard hat anywhere. <laughs> what were hard hats? Hmm. So is that building still standing? Oh yeah, yeah. That's used now as a, a general store. Uh, I've got my woodworking uh, tools all in there. Well, oh, this is a combine, combine coming. This is pre pre um, uh, self propel combines. This is a trailer one. So how much would that have cost? The combine and the dryer cost two thousand pounds between them. 
I think the combine was 1200 and the, and the draw was 800. Nowadays you're talking, oh, I don't know, 100,000, 200,000, perhaps because of modern ones, because they're about 30 foot cut, or perhaps even bigger than that. They're satellite controlled. So how, how wide was that? That was only took seven foot. Compared to the binder which did five. But five foot, yeah. Crashed it and did everything. Yeah, this did that. everything and bunched the straw up was all at the same time. Yeah. Which was a big help because uh, it only need one man to cut the combine. And the combines before that, they were used to have bags on, you know, put it all in bags, which was probably like, hard work. And when I bought this, this was one of the latest ones. I thought, so I'm going to have ones that I can sit on there doing nothing, apart from driving it, and everything else is done for me. So that would go straight into the effective green corn up in bulk? Oh yeah. Yeah, you'll see that in a little more. The only snag is, the first year we had it, we mowed round the field first because we didn't want to uh, damage the corn. But after the uh, first year, we decided we could pick it up as nearly as well be, uh, with the combine as what we could mowing, mowing round. So that was a big job out of the way. Because you imagine five or six foot mowing round on the outside of a field, a 14 acre field. Oh, hand mowing it. Oh, hand mowing with it. Oh, yeah. Size. Yeah, with a size. Yeah. Is that the dryer? That's the dryer coming in, yeah. That did three ton an hour, which was pretty good in those days. <laughs> but nowadays it won't be anywhere near good enough for a combine. So that went to what, the bottom of the shed? That's the bottom of the shed, yeah. It was driven by the tractor, because we've got no electric, and belt drive, and uh, powered by diesel and a furnace. When we first lit the furnace up, the flame was about a yard and a half long, and I thought, oh God, this is going to be safe in here. But we had no trouble with it. It's still got the old thing in the shed, but it's, it's useless now. Nobody wants a thing like that. So the, sh the shed looked a lot bigger than the other sheds. Is that still a big shed for today? Sorry? The shed, the, the doorway and so on. I mean, it looks tight there. Yeah. Is that a big shed by today's standards? Well, why that door's tight is because that's where we used to have the wet pit. The bottom end of the shed where the drawer is. We, used to, we didn't go in the main main door. Oh, I thought you went into the main door. No, 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 we didn't go in the main door. No. And this this combine would, because um, uh, we weren't really up to date with chemicals, or nobody was up to date really with chemicals. And this had got a, on this outside one, or you'll see it in better in a minute. It got a pickup reel that would pick nearly anything up off the ground, and that revolving thing there, that would split if you got a lot of uh, bind weed or other tangled stuff, it would part it so you could keep going. It was really a really up to date modern machine. There's your mother in the, the background one, there, yeah. keeping an eye on you. One thing we found we had to do because so much dust, there's not much dust there, but so much dust, we had to put a six foot extension on the air cleaner and an all-on stocking on the top to keep the combine, you're going to keep the tractor cool. My sister, I'd say, Ivy used to die and she'd come home at night covered in dust. Oh, it's a mucky job. But uh, here we are. As you can see, we unloading the corn into the cart again. We still haven't got mechanised. So later on, somebody would have driven alongside you. Oh yeah, but you it on the move. But we couldn't do it with the bunches because the bunches were in the way. You see, and, and uh, as you notice on the threshing, when we were threshing before, where we got those big bunches, they were that size, so you couldn't drive over them. So with this, this put the straw out of the back as bunches. As bunches, yep. Yeah, as, 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 as they were when they came off the. Yep. Uh, off the uh, threshing drum. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did you need as much straw in those days? We we used straw until oh we we then used to have a baler come in and bale it for us. As my brother-in-law come to fetch the, the tractor and trailer up. As you can see in the background, we've got the Volkswagen pickup truck that was used as a as a trailer, but that was hard work because that all had to be shoveled off. Now he's taking it up to the to the grain dryer. As you can see now, a beast more of invention here. 
making a ramp so you can get your trailer up on the hill. Well, he hasn't got a lot of spare room. He's only about six inches of a solid. And he didn't want to go into the wet pit, else that would have been trouble, and he didn't want to come off the side. That's what we call the wet pit, which has now disappeared. So you put the, cor the dry cor the wet corn in, in there? In the there, combine. yeah. Yeah, and there's an elevator. You can see that grey and yep. things. That's an elevator which puts it in the dryer. Dry within dryer, and, yeah, and the dryer, it, or? you'll see that in a minute. Aunt Edie used to be in charge of the dryer, and uh, she used to push 18 stones of wheat or whatever the corn was doing in a, in a sack. And then I'd come in there and I would uh, wind them up and put them on higher, up on two or three high. <coughs> so all the corn sold at the farm in, in bags, bags, in bags yeah. Yeah. Whereas now it all goes in bulk, doesn't it? It all goes in bulk down the grain store, down where we, you can see the sacks that's just coming into view. Look, she would she would reel them back and forth. No, not back and forth, but back to the heat. No, and we used to put a wooden floor down, which were prefab floors. Now, 22 foot long, the floors were, and 10 foot wide, and they were all stacked on those, so the rats didn't, uh, you know, they weren't on concrete, but otherwise just, they'd have gone mouldy probably. What's that? That's loading into the home truck? That's loading into the home truck, yeah. And you can see how we used to treat it in a minute. Not very kindly. That's got about nearly a ton of corn on there now. Oh, that's bouncing a bit there, isn't it? <laughs> That's Grandad now. He's uh, he didn't use to drive a tractor much, but I think he's only just bringing the tractor home. I'm probably walking behind him or something. But he was a horseman. He said, "You youngsters, you can drive these modern tractors." And that was a modern tractor. <laughs> well, in those days, anyway. <laughs> Well, this, this was uh, Margaret's uncle, who came with, whose men come and help us ship some up one day, or one, one year. They're really modernised, see? Not a four-time fork, but a mechanical digger. And he got proper trailers. All of three ton. Okay. So they're loading up them up from the back of the pigsties? Somewhere the pigsties, yeah, I think so. Yeah, right. and a bit later on you'll see where we put it into a heap, bigger heap, so it'll rot better. But this is just to show how we've done. Wish we'd got one when we had a four time fork. But we don't want to go back too far in history. So how would you have known people like him? Because that was before you were married, wasn't it? Yeah, I know Jerry through the Farmers Union, through Chad. Uncle Chad. So there's a lot of help, help each other. Oh, the yeah. Community aspect of the yeah. job as well. Yeah. See, there are a lot more people on farms in those days. You think Raymond and Alan now, they farm somewhere about, I think it's 12, 1400 acres. There's only those two regular. And then they go out doing cleaning patios, gravestones, buildings, and pressure washer and all that sort of thing. And I said to him, well, how do you fit your time? And he said, when it rains, we put a waterproof on and we go and do these jobs. Here we're, we're now putting the muck into a bigger heap, as you can see. We've got a four-end loader now. So who's driving that? It looks like me. But again, a bit silly, we hadn't got the weight on the back of the tractor, which we needed. The wheels were spinning. That was to make it right much, much better. <laughs> Nowadays, 
My nephew comes, brings him up down in a 14 ton trailer, chips it up, doesn't even handle it, and away he goes. Comes in next day probably with a teleporter, stacks it all about 15 foot high, ready for you know, ready for spreading. He then comes when he starts to spread, brings this muck spreader down, carries 14 ton, where my muck spreader carries 15 underweight. You can't see 15 underweight on that thing. And they say 14 ton now on the machine they got. And they travel a lot faster than I do. So before, would you have done that? How would you have done it before you got those machines? Four time fork and muscle power. So basically, stood in the back of one of those and. No, you wouldn't stand. You'd, you'd go along, you'd, like Arnie Harvey's loading muck there. You'd go out there with what we call a muck crone and you'd pull that out into little heaps every five, four or five yards, as far as you could you know, generally throw it. And then you'd go out with a four time fork and spread it all over the fields. But Ivy, like the Ivy, she, she loved tractor driving and she could back a tractor and trailer just when she wanted to. And drive a loader. She's got a bag on the back of her, a ton underweight of, or no, I suppose about 18 stone of corn on there. That's near the pigsty, the breeding shed. That one is. Chicken shed or something around the back of there now, isn't there? Yeah. Shed. Oh yeah, yeah. When did that have got moved round or something? That that was moved when we had fail pest. Oh, I don't know what year it was when fail pest was all over the place, and uh, we had this young lady from the veterinary school or wherever she came from said, "All these chickens have got to be killed by uh, five o'clock this afternoon." Well, I'd only killed a chicken like a, for dinner, and there was mum and I. We were killing, I don't know, thousand chickens. You got used to it after about the second one or third one, you thought, well, you've got to be done. And then they brought a load of sleepers down. And uh, we didn't dig a pit, we just had them on these slippery sleepers, set fire to them, and carried all these chickens out and burned them. So how would you kill them? Oh, quick, uh, you know, break the neck. It didn't hang about long. Yeah. I don't know if we slept that night. Yeah, it's been a rotten day. But there we are, that's what happened. Nowadays, if you get fail pests, they take them all away and uh, incinerate them somewhere else. That's just for a bit of backing, you watch this. You don't hang about. Sunny Mirror's house, of course. I think this is Ernie Muxfreddy now, isn't it? Yeah, it's Ernie Muxfreddy. See, we've still got an old standard Ford. <clears throat> so when would you have got that? 1938. We had the first tractor in 1935. That was on iron wheels. A hand crank. And it kicked like a mule. Well, that's that's my father. That's finishing the last fur off because the players we got one wide enough to finish finish the fields off. So he would go round with his plough. He wouldn't drive the tractor. He'd rather follow the plough. Way of exercising a dog, that would as well. I did that one year with your grand's dog. What happened? Well, he, he got tired at the end of the day. He used to walk up and down this field all afternoon, and uh, I think he died after that soon after. But, well, I ain't got time to walk a dog. It's case time behind me play, I'll let him walk up and down. Now, that's my sister playing ready to. Uh, this will be October, no, it'll be November, I suppose, ready for drilling wheat. And that, I don't think that tractor has got a diff lock on it, which is, nowadays they've got diff locks, four wheel drives, you name it, they've got it. Still air conditioned. So, what are you doing standing on the back? Just adjusting the plough. Again, health and safety, you know. They never came round, well, they weren't about. 
just adjusting it so it's not so deep the last time around I think nowadays it's all one way play you start one side of the field and you finish up the other that with those days in those days we had to mark the field out and if you got it marked out wrong you've got a lot of fetch a lot off one side to finish up the other day this must be before 60 or 63 because the old hair old um, little rag still there so was that empty long before you bought it Shut down because it was a pub up until you bought it. No, it was it was a pub. Yeah, then it closed down, and we bought it, and we had a tenant in it for six months. But he went to work in metal box, and then we had chickens in it. And like I say, I was going down, being low ceilings, it was father. But like I say, now we're we're using three tractors getting this land ready. Nowadays, they plough it. And then the rest of it was all done by one tractor and drill, and all done in one go. Is he ploughing it? Rolling it, it, rolling it, I think, yeah, he's rolling it. But you see, nowadays you've got all the power har power drive tools. You can stick one on the front, and that'll break it all to pieces. You can stick another one underneath that, get it nice down to a nice tilt. And on top of that, you'll put a corn drill, which carries a ton, ton and a half. And away they go. Is that now the, that's, now that's, the that's, a, that's a fertiliser spreader. Put a bit of fertiliser on it. As you can see, it's not very level. But, uh, yeah. Time, time's changed. So, what was that old Alice like to start? Oh, was that a self starter? Oh, was that a self starter? Self starter, yeah. Unless the battery was flat, and then you, like you, say, you swung it with a start up, and it used to kick like a mule. You ever get caught by it? Yeah, that's what done my hand. Oh, how did you do that? Ripped it in half. The, the flywheel came, oh, and the crank came back. And I was cranking him with, with, with my right hand, and it caught my left hand. Don't know how it done it. As long as you were up to close to the farm, that wouldn't be fair. I wasn't up to close to the farm, I was further as well as I could be. Came home, swam, my, got my sister to take me to the doctor's. And he got a big needle out and started stitching, stitching it up. Drainage work. This this is uh, sometime in summertime. We had a ter torrential rain, and uh, and in that field is sugar beet. You'll see them but later on. You'll see them it's just sticking their heads through the water, and uh, we had to dig a trench right to the dike side. Can't, it must have been June time because the size of the beet, not, you know, they're not very big. I thought you were down by the seaside. Well, it looks like it. We, we thought we were, but you, you can just see, look, you can see the beets beet in, grow, in rows now, look. And we had to get that water off the beet as soon as we can, but it was a terrific thunderstorm, as far as I can remember. But since then, all the farm has been underdrained, and uh, when I mean underdrained, that's there with clay pipes, and they're all at 22 yards apart or a chain, so hopefully we never get drained or flooded again. But we weren't the only one, you know. A lot of neighbours got the same. And we're just getting getting the trench dug so we can get the water to run to the dike. Where's your cap gone? Because I've only ever seen you without your cap on before. Probably lost it in the water. Yeah. You can see how much water was in there. I can't, I can't idea that was a box farm again. As you can see, we cut a trench just to get water run away. Yeah. Nowadays they come in with a machine. Oh yeah. They come in with a machine and uh, a lay pipes about five foot deep, all mechanically, laser guided and all the rest of it. So what's this then? This this was sugar beating and uh, I think we should find you on this Matthew somewhere. This was the second beater harvest we had because this is a tanker, so it meant one person could take the beat up and put it in a tank and then the, the trailer hadn't got to keep with it all day long. I remember when we used to come and lift the corners before we started. Yeah. We did that all by hand. Yeah. We don't do the corners now because sea beat worth, is not worth anything. So that's, like you say, one man job. There you are, Matthew. Look. That's a long time ago. <laughs> yes, when you were a little lad. 
This was taken next to Arnie Muriel's house near the pigsty. So nowadays they just run the corners over and let that leave that to rot. Well, they don't. Uh, they they don't, don't, drill don't drill them in the corners now. That if they do, they rotivate them up in the spring. Because now the machine comes in, takes six rows at a time, carries 14 ton on a tanker, and the trailer takes 14 ton. Two men. They travel up and down the field like the clappers, and they came to last year to take it up. They came on a Saturday afternoon, Sunday dinner time. They'd all finished 26 acre. And that's Jack the dog. And that shows how straight the, the drove used to be. Still the old he house. Like he's been working hard. Yeah. There's Grandad with two papillon dogs. Butterfly dogs, I think they're called. Can you imagine my dad walking up, up the road with a couple of dogs like that? They belong to Mirage. Mum and Dad went on holiday. And somewhere or other, these dogs, I, I was looking after them. Somewhere else, these blooming dogs died. I wasn't very popular. Mind you, they were old dogs, though. I think they were about 15 years old. <laughs> but uh, there we are. No, Dad wasn't a dog man like that. <clears throat> well, this is up the drain. It's just a, a swan's nest and uh, just a quick, you know, quick food. Because later on, we used to go fishing for them. Yeah. That's it, and you, you came home one day and said, Dad, can you come and help me? I've got a pike holding my net. And I think he's cleared your net out, hasn't he? Yeah. Matt, there's your mum, when she could walk. Not like she is today, I'm afraid. This is a jubilee when... Uh, and uh, there comes Helen, your niece, your cousin. Big celebration, much bigger than the Golden Jubilee, wasn't it? Oh yeah, and uh, it was. There was a lot more than this, but we cut someone out because we didn't think it'd be interesting. There comes you. There comes me, yeah, and a binder. That was the second one on, second way of going. And Jerry on the top. Uh, a ransom beet harvester, which was very new, but was not very popular. Never did make many. And this is the Scobbies with Roger on it. This was Doctor Who and the Scobbies with a little, with the cubs, wasn't it? Yep. Cubs, yeah. That's that red trailer again from yeah, the beginning. Yeah, red trailer, yeah. Which you know you're not there to use now because health and safety won't allow you to use them because they might fall off, break your neck. You'll see your mum in there. She goes again, look. Mum's walking all behind. And I suppose there would be about 30, 40 floats. Everybody took part in it. That's less than 30 years ago, isn't it? Mm. There's a camel. And a lot of the companies that have got floats on there just don't exist anymore, do they? No. No, it's sad. 